Hi friends, it's Amanda May and this is my channel Artith Design where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and needlework across the world. Today I'm going to show you some fun stuff that I've been stitching this week. So my work's in progress. That includes counted cross stitch and a tiny little bit of quilting and some wood burning thrown in there. We are going to do the giveaway for the mystery, what is Amanda May designing for the next series for, there's count the cups, count the saucers, what's the next release? So we're gonna do that giveaway winner. I have some questions and answers, and we're gonna do my new segment. This is the third week of Needle Workers in the News. While there might not be a whole lot of good news out in the world, let's share some good news that needleworkers bring to us and make our world a better place through their art and craft. So let's get started. Yay! First off, I got a lot of questions about an impulse purchase I made that came and I showed you all last week in my last floss tube video. I impulse purchased my first ever silk kit. It came with the silk floss, which I've never stitched with. And it is the pattern by the drawn thread. And it's called Hearts and Flowers, the Violet Sampler. I got this on eBay. I do not know if there's your local needlework shop might carry this pattern. I do not know if it's in print anymore or not my best suggestion is to go ahead and do a saved search on eBay and you can get alerted via text message or email if this pattern comes up for sale. And that goes for lots of patterns. <laughs> if you are on the lookout for something, you can always do a saved search on eBay. I would say I haven't had a whole lot of luck finding patterns through Pinterest or Google per se, but you do, you, you search around, call around. <laughs> I am really excited about this pattern. And yes, to everyone asking, I am a February kid. Hence the reason I love the violets and, you know, winter ending, spring beginning. Yes, so that was a question. I also had some questions again about this piece here. It's Kingsland Quilt Shop number five. Again, see online if you can find it. It is an out of print chart. It's from 1995. I would love if anybody has purchased and planning on stitching this, let me know, tag me on Instagram, comment below if you are gonna stitch it as is or if you're gonna revive those 1990s colors into a 2020 color palette. I would love to see. Again, you can tag me at Artith Design on Instagram. And oh my gosh. I love it. Uh, Jefferson Memorial. One of these days, I'm going to go down and see those cherry blossoms blooming. I've, I've made excuses for the last five years with small children, and now they're getting a little older. I feel like I can't, I just got to get on down there. So maybe 2021 will be the year that I see those cherry blossoms down by the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C. And that another question I get, what's my local needlework shop? That is the Stitching Post in Baltimore. It is technically in Catonsville, Maryland, rather than Baltimore. But if you're not from around here, Baltimore will suffice. <laughs> uh, it's, that's hop, skip, and a jump about 45 minutes away. DC is an hour away. Gettysburg is 45 minutes. Appalachian Trail, at West Virginia, another 45 minutes. So I am in the center of Central Maryland, stitching and video filming and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the bees are out. People are horseback riding in my neighborhood. Life is good. So what have I also been stitching this week? Well, I have been working on my cottage garden sampling. This is Dream. This is the number 11 in the cottage garden, the Songbird Garden series. And I love it. I'm stitching it all in the called for DMC on a toasted almond linen fabric. I think it's 32 count. This is my working copy because I have made so many mistakes. I just got to have that working copy. I went ahead and added, as everything falls, I went ahead and worked on the bird 
and I'm so excited. I got those grays in and some of the feathers. I'm excited to have this piece done. I absolutely love it. I have to finish the bird, the, the word dream. And then there's a couple of leaves and stuff that I have yet to include. These two leaves up here in the top corner. I've got to get, oh, I have one. So what am I missing? I got to go look at my highlighter and see what, see what I'm missing. Oh, I have to thank all of the needle workers, all of my cross stitch friends who have talked to me about the retractable clicking highlighters. Game changer. I got a pack of four. Oh my gosh. Love them. Retractable highlighters. That is my gadget, my new gadget thing that I love. <laughs> I, of course, I. if any of you watch Country Sampler, uh, st I'm sorry, C Country Samplers is a shop in Wisconsin. Country Stitchers is an influential floss tube channel on YouTube with Deb and Liz. <laughs> the ongoing joke with them is that uh, <laughs> Deb is always losing her highlighters. Yeah. I, I am also <laughs> losing highlighters and chapstick. Can't find anything. And then all of a sudden I'm like, where did, oh, that's where my 17 highlighters went. Anywho. All right. I have that. I worked on my Remember Me. This is from Birds of a Feather. I absolutely love this piece. I have decided I am not going to be stitching the words. I am going to do the witch. I did I, the witch, the cat. And then I was thinking about just like finishing it here or just finishing it here, just the witch with a cat. And then I looked online because while I love buttons, I have no star buttons. Then I was looking at star sequence because I was thinking in replacing an, of the words here, adding star, moon and star buttons. So I was looking at that. I saw that Just Another Button Company has different colored star buttons. And then I thought, should I get a plastic set? And if so, should I get multicolored? Should I try to just really make it bright and different or do something a little less? I don't know. <laughs> so here we go. I have been having a good time playing around with the dimensions and the textures of this piece. This I stitched, this is on a 14 count Ada that I hand dyed myself with Rit dye. This is stitched with the two strands of the 12 weight Sulky in the color, it's one, two, three, four. I use it so much I literally <laughs> have broken off the little snap because these are the, the snap closure where you can put your thread like this and then snap it. Well, I've snapped it so much I've broken this one off. <laughs> All right, I digress. Two strands for the hat. For her skirt and the hood, I used just one strand so you can really see the difference in coverage. And it is what it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna redo it. I, it is what it is. And then this, right here the cat oh my gosh i am so excited about this cat it is the new thread by sulky it's the 12 weight rayon thread i've been testing it out stitching all the things i am going to have a blog post up pretty soon on my website at artithdesign.com talking about this thread comment below. Let me know if you would like a tutorial video or if, if you would, wouldn't would mind seeing more of me. Hi, I'm Amanda May. <laughs> Just talking about stitching with rayon thread. And yes, did you hear that right? Do you have your listening ears on? That's what I say to my kids. Listening ears on. If you want to know how I'm cross stitching with this rayon thread, acrylic thread, not cotton. It's not cotton. It's synthetic. So let me know. I'm so excited. That was with one strand. So all the different things. Oh, also, I made a mistake. The skin, I did like a peach. I did the conversion and it's like, like Caucasian peach. 
This is with two threads and this is with one thread. So I've got to go back and fix her hands because she is, she's pretty pale in the hands. So there she is again, but star buttons. I'm hoping, oh, I don't know if you can hear in the background, my pugs are snoring. <sighs> Cutest thing. Cutest thing. All right. Very excited about this. My next piece that I have been stitching on, I'm trying to move stuff out of the way just a little bit so I don't make too much of a mess. I started working on my Blackbird Designs Garden Club Series. Apparently I have a thing for starting number 11s. Number 11 in that series, number 11 in this series. This is Fairy Garden. I am using all the cold for gentle art threads. And I have it on my Diana. It is Kismet. The luggage tag rings, which are amazing. Oh, and someone asked me about this. I literally, so these are, I... I learned this trick early last year by Susie Reno. Susie Reno, prolific quilter, cross-stitcher. She's up in uh, Minnesota, so she's got the cutest uh, Minnesota. Oh, I love listening to her. And when Avis comes around, Miss Avis. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I digress. She told me, because I've been new to cross-stitching. I have been cross-stitching about five years. So tips and tricks, I'm still learning and I love learning. So she had said you take and you hole punch on the side and then the your, your floss that you, you have been using, you put on the side. Well, I got these really cool, they're from Fis Fiskers. Instead of a hole punch, just the traditional circle one, it's literally a cross-stitch X hole punch. Yes, please sign me up. So <laughs> that's what I have on all of these. And I learned that trick from Susie Reno. She is the other half to Raise the Roof Designs. Um, their, their stuff is out of production, I believe, except for like their Christmas Raise the Roof Christmas pattern for the, you can find it on the Kitten Stitchers for PDF download for the stash for cats and dogs, the fundraiser. Anyway, Raise the Roof designed super cute stuff. And these are all the called floor gentle art threads for Fairy Garden. I got last year in one of the live sales from a needlework shop in California. I got this in one of their live sales that they had. And this is the Apple Orchard. I'm not in love with it. I... I was going to stitch this one next and it's not my favorite. The one that I want to, these are some of the ones in the series and all the different patterns. I want to do the butterfly and then this bas this one here, these three in the center are my favorites. And so I originally start, let me just show you what I've been stitching. I've been talking about it for the last five minutes. Here is where I'm at. I worked on this just long enough to make a mistake and then I put it away. I said no more. I'm stitching this on a cream linen. As you can see, it's significantly lighter than the called for. So the house, you can't really see that lamb's wool. It's fine though. I have enough to do like one more on the side and then the other two. So I was thinking when I save up my money, save up my pennies, I'll get those three and I'm just gonna have the four done. Like I said, this one isn't speaking to me. I am going to follow the rule of Brenda and the Serial Starter, Brenda and Laura, and buy all the Blackbird. I bought this. I'm not getting rid of it, but it's just not speaking to me right now. I also thought about, could I mix and match some of the Blackbirds and put them on this, even though they're not the Garden Series, but put maybe one of the Sewing Club pieces with the house here, like the Hollyhocks that I've been wanting to stitch, maybe putting and, and making it a piece that mixes and matches or do I need to stick to a purist? Do I need to be a, I don't know what to do. I'm going to ruminate on it and I will get back to you on what I decide to do. I, I don't know. It's in my fancy, <laughs> in my fancy bag. <laughs> All right. The next piece that I've been working on uh, is my Sweetheart Hill 
by Plum Street Samplers. Oh my gosh, I love this. I built my first ever red house last week and then I've moved on to that hill and I, I am moved on to that hill. <laughs> I chose my color at dusk. Like it was like, well, you know what dusk is, right? At the end of the day. And this looked not so bright. <laughs> now that I'm stitching it, I don't know if I love that or not, but I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna build the hill. Worst case scenario, it's not my favorite and it's not my favorite. I will not rip it out. I just keep moving forward. I can always maybe add some lighter or different shade of like do like backstitched or do, I, I could do some sort of embellishment to tone down that hill. Or I could just get over myself, say it's gonna look great and have that bright green lawn. We shall see. All right, that is everything that I've been stitching on this week that I can show you because I have been busy, y'all. I have been busy working on model stitching and also my upcoming publication of my new cross stitch inventory notebook that's coming out for just in time for, you guessed it, Jolly July for Christmas stitching in July or holiday stitching in July. So that specific notebook will be coming out very soon. I submitted it, published, it, approved the, anyway, it's out in the universe. I am excited about that. I have a Jolly July release coming soon. So yes, many of you have asked what my favorite holiday is. With Christmas, Valentine's Day, Halloween, stitching all of them. <laughs> So it, I do have a holiday design coming out shortly as well as my next Little Red Sampler that's coming out. I've had lots of people ask me about the reds that I'm using for my sampler series. The first one, Count the Cups, I used Weeks Dye Works Cayenne Red. The second one, I used Sulky's... Um, 0169 red. The third one that I'm stitching right now is in color and cotton, Bing Cherry Red. Now, you stitch it whatever color red you like, or if you like black samplers, you can stitch it in black. If you like purple samplers, you can stitch it in purple. You do you. I have to stress this. We are in very difficult times. We've got thread shortages. We've got weird stuff happening. So whatever makes you happy to stitch on, you do it. <laughs> and I love it. Whatever you choose, I love it. Okay. I feel like I'm starting to yell. I get very excited. <laughs> I just start yelling at the camera. Excuse me. Whew. All right. Speaking of these samplers, so I've got those stitches that I, I can't show you because I've been model stitching and finishing and all the things. So I'm going to talk giveaway right now. I posted two videos ago about, you know, guess what my third sampler is. Well, dagnabbit, I don't have it to show you because I'm still stitching it. I'm not telling you what the theme is, but I'm still going to give something away. <laughs> so you had to have been a subscriber to my channel. I did the random uh, number picker and the comments. So I counted down uh, based on my subscriber and the comment, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the winner is Sharon. And Sharon, here is your last name. Look up. Fellow Maryland Stitcher. The prize is you go to my Amazon author page. Yes, hi, I'm a best-selling cross-stitch author on Amazon. You tell me which one of my books or notebooks you would like and I will order it and have it sent to you. So tell me what you want, Nod. I'll mail it to you. <laughs> okay, the next, because now I'm like super into giveaways. I stopped doing giveaways for months and months and now I feel like they're back. So my next, giveaway for next week is going to be a $10 gift card to a online needlework shop. I contacted a couple of them 
So I can't tell you exactly which one's gonna do that gift certificate, but it's gonna happen. So a $10 gift card to a cross stitch shop. And the question is, what are your plans for Jolly July? What are your plans for stitching in July? I know many of you are finishing up your May stitching. I'm looking forward to July. I'm like going to breeze past June, prep all June, and then July is going to be just jingle bells, twinkle lights, all the things. So tell me if you have any plans for Jolly July. I, you can also say Flossmas or Stitchmas or just tell me stitching wise what um, you're up, you're, if you have any plans for July. I'm not going to do a specific um, comment like keyword. I'm going to do it by the number. So you, there's no keywords other than just tell me <laughs> and, and be a subscriber. All the general rules apply. $10 gift certificate. Next week, is gonna, I'm going to draw the winner. Okay, moving on. What do we want to talk about? Should we talk about... Okay, yeah, we're going to talk about this. I worked on a couple of my... More of my nine patch quilt squares. Excuse me, the sun is coming in. I'm going to just kind of move... I'm moving the camera, everyone. Maybe that will help a little bit. Okay, I worked a little bit more on my nine patch... These are all the remnant fabrics from making fabric masks that I am making. And I don't know, I I fielded the idea to my husband about making the bag for him and he didn't seem that excited about that. So I've got to think of something else I'm going to make with that. The next thing that I have been working on, because apparently I can't just stitch, I have to start wood burning because I have and I don't know if it's really a thing, but I have Glow Forge Envy. What do I mean by that? Glow Forge Envy. There are these laser cut things that a lot of needle minder companies and needle workers have right now. And you program it and then it cuts things perfectly. <laughs> the cutest little wood shapes and the wood burning and all that stuff. Well, I went old school and I pulled out my old, you know, 950 degree wood burning tool and decided to start making some stuff. So <laughs> I started working on making, these are wood rounds from um, my neighborhood, the wood, and I dried and seasoned it for the last two years, three years. And so I finally, I wood burned and started painting and they're going to be little strawberries. And they're going to be the little tag, the little like tag holder things. Oh my gosh. So because I couldn't help myself, I started making different. I, I made this one with a little face with a little nose. Ah! And then I was messing around with that new, that rayon thread, that 12 weight thread. So I made like little chair, little strawberries to hang and just doing some like freehand stitching and stuff, just working. So I made like little strawberries and look at this one, this one's so cute. I didn't have a pattern, I was just cutting out and 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 stitching. So, but I, I made, I, I, I did a lot of wood burning. <laughs> so I have all these little tomato needle markers because you know, why not? And everyone is different. I like this one. I put little, I put little, um, rosy cheeks on the tomato because who doesn't love an anthropomorphic vegetable? I mean, really? So this is the, this is what I was working on this last weekend. I had a lot of fun mixing up my favorite red and working on that project. And then the next thing that I want to do, because in my quest of hashtag making all the things, I want to make this little kit. And this is a buttermilk basin pattern in this little ball, ball, ball jar, excuse me. And I have 
exactly zero of the called for fabrics. I got nothing. Have I ever done this before? No, I haven't. But I want to do it so much that I got both of her books, Buttermilk Basin books, The Vintage Vibes and The Christmas. Look at this Vintage Vibes. Okay, can we just talk about how cute that is? And then look at this one for 4th of July. Look at that trike with that flag. Oh my gosh. And then that thermos. I mean, come on. And then you're cut out to be mine, Valentine's Day. I mean, she hit it out of the park. My three favorite holidays on the cover of her new book. Hello, gorgeous. I will have this link below, both of these books. And they come with the um, the pattern, like all the, to, to, to do all the Tracy stuff. I'm tracing stuff. I also, and for my library, I did the... Uh, where you get your turn to electronically look at um, the vintage quilt revivals, like 25 historic quilt squares reimagined. Yeah, so vintage quilt revivals. So I've been looking at that because apparently I need to quilt and do wool applique and wood burning with some cross stitch and painting. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Should we do mail call? Okay, yes, we're gonna do mail call and then at the very end, we'll do needleworkers in the news segment. All right, let me kind of move some stuff out of the way. I got on my porch a package that I was not expecting from my amazing friend. Her name is Grace. She was my midwife for both of my children and she's amazing. And I taught her oldest daughter how to cross stitch a couple years ago. And so now we've like been talking about cross stitch. I went to her house uh, and like filmed a video when I traveled. It was like, I travel across state lines for cross stitch because she lives in West Virginia. And <laughs> anyway, she has been on the lookout for cross stitch stuff because she knows I am I don't want to say obsessed. I am immersed. I am in, not engulfed, immersed. I'm immer I just love it. I love cross stitch. I like, I'm shouting at you all right now to tell you how much I love it. <laughs> so she sent me a goodie box full of things that she has been squirreled away for the last, you know, months and months and months for me. So I am happy to report that I got some goodies that I want to show. Okay. The first she sent me button button identification of buttons because hi, I'm Amanda May and I am obsessed with buttons. I don't know anything about pricing them or selling them. I don't sell them. I just, I just buy them. I accumulate them. <laughs> Do I have star buttons though? No. Anyway, I got, she sent me that book. And then she sent me all of these patterns and I have not uh, looked at them specific. I just like kind of glanced at them. Um, this is by Fireside Stitchery and it looks like it's needlepoint and not cross stitch. But I still think it's gorgeous and we need to celebrate all the needlework. So she sent me that. And this is Santa with birdhouses. I think these are all needlepoint. But she sent me the patterns, which are great. I don't know if anybody has done any of these. They're so pretty. Oh, fireside stitchery. Oh, this one is fun. I like this one because look at the, it's got the, the miniature like pot and the broom by the hearth. I like the three-dimensional aspect of adding things to your stitching, like the charms and the little, the cutesy wootsies. And then here's the crush. And this is... Amy's favorite recipe for Kelly Clark's nativity. That is a really cool crush. If you like to stitch crushes, I know several of you do. So you know what? That might be a giveaway. It looks like it is. It is needle needle point from 2011. Amy Bunger out of Tennessee. I really like that. I like the 
in the background, all that. That's really cool. Awesome. So she sent me those. Oh, but wait, there's more. Okay. Two gingerbread houses. Now this says a small monthly quilt series from Nancy's Needle and it's got all the specialty stitches. Again, I think that's ne Needlepoint. I know nothing about Needlepoint. It's gorgeous. I cross stitch. Learning all the other stuff too. So super cute. Love it. We might have some giveaway goodies here. Comment below if you Needlepoint. Tell me. I don't know. All right. She also sent me Alphabets Galore, 136 Alphabets by Leisure Arts, and it's it's a nice hefty booklet. I like the Cardinals. I like that font, and there's some really cute ones. I like all oh, the little crayons. Look at that. That's so cute. Oh, have you seen, have you seen the new Crayola 32 skin tone crayons box set because we're all not the you know all the shades you know of humans and so there's like a new box set for skin tones and then some of the thread companies you know are really making sure to let you know that like white people were not the <laughs> only skin tone so that's really cool so anyway sorry <clears throat> crayons I also she said I these are so cute this is from the American School of Needlework, and it's all the different borders. And I think my favorite, my favorite is the little candy. Look at that little peppermint and a little kiss. And I will say I really like how bright this teacup set is with the sunflower. Y'all know I love sunflowers. And then look at those, look at those chickens. So awesome. So I, I really liked all the different colorful borders by Carol Wilson Mansfield. Awesome. She sent me some finished needle pe needlework pieces. This one still has the masking tape on it. These are one of the those kits um, that have these give us this day our daily bread. I don't know how I should finish something like this, but I definitely do need to take the masking tape off of it. Excuse me, the light is hitting weird. Got that. She sent me a little monogram towel. I'm excited about this. This is a pillowcase and it's uh, embroidery. I love it. And this piece I think is so precious. I don't know how I can incorporate it into something, but again, it's one of the stitching. It's probably from the 1930s or 40s, but U is for umbrella. My kids are learning the alphabet. I was trying to figure out what my favorite letter is, you know, what it, everything stands for. And I like it when they get to, you know, Y is for yak. Anyway, okay. I get a lot of questions too when people say, well, Amanda, you celebrate all things cross stitch, but you always send, tend to specify that you do counted cross stitch. Is there any other kind? Yes, there is. There's uncounted cross stitch. And I learned about uncounted cross stitch from Lori of Not Forgotten Farm. She teaches a class on that, which um, that's pretty cool. And there's also a thing called stamped cross stitch. And this that Grace just sent me is a fantastic example of stamped cross stitch. This is a vintage piece of linen. And uh, excuse me, my it's so bright. Let me see if I can move the move you. I'm moving you again. Oh, nope. I'm just all in sun. I'm filming earlier in the day today, so I wasn't prepared. So here you can see on the fabric itself, it's stamped. So that's stamped cross stitch. And there's some embroidery stitches on this. As you can see, it's started, but not finished. And so what you do is you take and you do your stitches right over that. So this is really cool. And my pugs are barking because my kids are coming inside. I 
have more to show you. Yes, I do. But I guess that means I'm just going to have to wait till next week. You're going to have to come on back. You're going to have to enter my giveaway. We're going to have to talk about more stuff. I didn't even get to my needle workers in the news. Okay, really fast. You're all awesome. No, I can't do it this week. All right, you matter, your stitching matters, and I'll see you next week. Take care.